Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to present you our results on the impact of high capacity vehicles on European freight transport. I'm Stefan Kirsten and my colleagues Andreas Lischke, Karina Taller, Gernot Liedke and me, we are focusing on the impact of the new upcoming high capacity vehicles. But in the beginning I want to describe general motivations. As we all know, the freight transport contributes a high percentage of worldwide carbon dioxide emissions, which influence the climate negatively. That's why we have to use and we have to look up for new zero emission road vehicle types and a more efficient road transport in general. We analyzed two new long haul duty vehicle configurations, which will be implemented in the European freight transport market, and we were focusing on their impact. But how did we do this? Well, we used our self-developed macroscopic freight transport model DEMU-GV and we were upscaling our results on a European level. The two new long-haul duty vehicle configurations are called EMS-1 and EMS-2 for European modular system. The EMS-1 has a gross combination weight about 60 tons and the EMS-2 has a gross combination weight about 70-40 tons. Both are equipped with an e-dolly which allows an independent moving of the trailer. The calculation of the impact of EMS 1 and 2 has been done at first by the model DEMO GV. It has three transport modes, rail, road and inland waterways and has 601 traffic cells on European area. That means there are 431 German traffic cells and 170 foreign tra traffic cells. All traffic cells are connected via an independent network which, co which corresponds with every traffic cell. The freight amount is differentiated into commodity groups which accord to the official classification NST 2007 plus the maritime and continental combined transport as an own transport mode. DEMO-GV uses a classical four-step approach which, which includes the freight generation, the distribution, the model split and the transport mean split on road. The first step of DEMO-GV is the freight generation step. There is the, the calculation of the produced and needed freight volume for every traffic cell. That means there are sources and sinks. This calculation corresponds to the gross value added for each traffic cell. It corresponds to the paper of Müller in 2015. In the first step, there is the calculation of the freight volume, which has been exported or imported. And in the second step, we calculate the freight volume, which has been transported inside Germany. And in the end, there is the calibration of the source freight volume for each commodity. In the second step, there is the distribution step. Here we calculate the volume of tons which has been transported from a source traffic cell to the sink tra traffic cell. For this we use the gravitation assumption between a source A and a sink J. And this gravitation assumption is a product of an exponential function and the masses of a sink and the mass of a source. And this gravitation assumption is, has been used via uh, for an iterative proportional fitting to get the final amount of tons which is, which is transported from a source to a sink. The third step of DEMO-GV is the model split calculation. There is the calculation about how many tons will be transported on a specific mode. Therefore, we take the definition of the utility U corresponding to the paper of BVU in 2012. The utility here is a sum of several parameters and box Cox transformations BC. It takes into account several betas and lambda parameters, which corresponds to the segments which are mentioned here. And this describes the use, utility, the usefulness of a transportation from a specific source to a specific sink um, on a specific mode. And the box Cox transformations are taking into account the cost for a specific transportation, its time, its punctuality, and its delay, in average, of course. And 
this utility we are calculating in DMUGV has to be calibrated on an observed freight amount. And that's why we have to add an alpha to get the calibrated utility. And this calibration um, is happening according to distribution matrix in 2010. In the end of the model split calculation, we take the calibrated utility U calibrated for a calculation of the probability P for a specific mode between a specific source and sink. And this probability has been used yeah, to calculate the final model split M by using the distribution and distribution. And yeah, that's the model split we wanted to get. The last step of the DEMO GV calculation is the transport mean split on road. That's for we divided all the truck types we have into seven truck types corresponding to the gross combination weight. And the two heaviest truck types are EMS1 and 2. The mean split calculation depends on regional and long distance traffic. Beside of this, we defined a new definition of utility just for road, the new utility U, and it takes into account the cost per ton, which has to be spent if we want to transport a good on a specific truck type from a source to a sink. Um, this definition U we see here below needs into account the cost C and the parameters alpha and gamma. And these has to be trans um, calibrated. And how did we do the calibration? Well, we used the uh, um, freight transport on road corresponding to Eurostat and made a maximum likelihood estimation. And that's why we get um, alpha and gamma we used for the transport mean split calculation in the scenarios. Well, in the end, we got the results focusing on the German traffic transport. And now in the end, we have to upscale the results on European level. That's why we have to extend it on the EU 28, that means including the United Kingdom, to get the final results. And herefore, we used or we assumed the following equation, which says more or less that the ratio of transport performance in Germany is more or less similar similar to the transport performance in the European Union. And these assumptions are not randomly, it is because of the Europe 2016 projection, which allows us this equation. After calculating the results via DEMOGV and the upscaling on European level, we get the final results. The results are focusing on four scenarios we defined in advance. That they, these are the followings. The A scenario is the baseline scenario in 2040. That means we say, okay, there is no EMS1 and EMS2 in 2040. The B scenario is an implementation just of EMS1 without any restrictions in 2040. That means EMS1 can drive through the whole European Union. The C scenario is the implementation of EMS1 and EMS2 without any restrictions in 2040. So that means also they both can drive through, through the whole European Union. And the last scenario is an implementation of EMS 1 and 2 in 2040 without heavy commodities, which are avoided for EMS 1 and 2. Why did we do this? We want to avoid that heavy cargo will be shifted from whale to road. And yeah, these are the results we get focusing on the transport performance in billion ton kilometers in 2040 on the European Union. And here we see rail, road and inland waterways, the three modes, and the brighter colors are the combina combined transport. And what are the results on this calculation? Well, we see a change of the uh, transport performance corresponding to the baseline in 2040. So in the scenario EMS1, there's an increase of 0.7 in road 
and a reduction of 2% in rail and 1.7% in inland waterways. And in the scenario EMS 1 plus 2, there is a bigger increase on road, about 1.1%, and there is a reduction of 3.2% in rail and a reduction of 2.6% in inland waterways. If there is an exclusion of heavy commodities in the last scenario, there are smaller increases on the road, which is about 0.6%, and a reduction on rail about 1.5%, and here we can't see it that much here, there is a reduction of 1.7% on the inland waterways. Besides of the calculation of the transport performance by using EMS 1 and 2, we calculated also the traveled kilometers for HDV, EMS 1 and EMS 2. And here we see the traveled billion road kilometers on EU 28 for the several scenarios. And if we have the baseline scenario in 2040 with 100% of the traveled billion road kilometers, we have a change of the percentage depending on the scenarios. And what do we see? Um, the EMS-1 get a percentage of 7.4% in the EMS-1 scenario, and the EMS-2 truck type get 3.5% in the scenario EMS-1 point or plus 2. And if there is an exclusion of commodities in the last scenario, both percentages reduce to 4.3% or 2% for EMS 2. The traveled kilometers have been used for a calculation about the carbon dioxide emission corresponding to the scenarios we defined. And we calculated the emissions on road in the way of tank to wheel by using diesel fuel. And we see an increase for the several scenarios. So we have an increase of 3.4% in the EMS-1 scenario, an increase of 6.5% in the EMS-1 plus 2 scenario, and a smaller increase about 5.7% if there is an inclusion of heavy commodities. So if we want to come back to the beginning of our presentation, we wanted to calculate the impact and wanted to say, is EMS 1 and 2 an opportunity for um, an environmental opportunity on road? And here we see an increase of the carbon dioxide emission. That, that leads us to several premises for a sustainable use of EMS 1 and 2. That means we have to address several segments with high transport performance to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. As well, we have to address them for gro growing cargo groups. As well, we have to limit a reverse model shift from whale and inland waterway to road transport by accompanying measures. So we can't see it here, but it's called accompanying measures. As well, we have to embed it for a carbon dioxide reduction strategy for mega manufacturing and logistic firms. Well, what's the summary about all the researches we did? If we have a look on the transport performances measured in ton kilometers in all the scenarios, we see an increase of the road transport and a slight reduction for railway and inland waterways. It happens due to the higher efficiency on road transport. And if we have a look on the road mileage in the, all the scenarios, we see there's an increase of road mileage between 2010 and 2040 of the heavy duty vehicles, the HDVs, by 61%. And EMS-1 realizes up to 7.5% of the mileage of HDV, and EMS-2 realizes up to 3.5% of the mileage of HDV. So, and we will see that this occurs a higher percentage of carbon dioxide emissions, which has to be reduced by several pol politics. Um, thank you for your attention and ask me for further questions if they occurred. Thank you.